Once considered a poor man's food, cassava is actually one of the world's most important staple foods and a key ingredient in the $10 billion, zero cents plus, starch industry. With production of over 300 million tonnes per year, cassava not only has a huge economic impact, but also helps sustain life in many areas facing food insecurity. But how exactly does this humble root make the journey from red soil to refined starch? Join us as we explore the incredible journey from cultivation, harvesting to modern processing plants in today's video. Cassava cultivation began in the fertile red basalt soils of tropical regions, particularly in Africa, Southeast Asia and South America. What makes cassava unique is that it is not grown from seed like most other crops, but from cuttings. After each harvest, healthy plants are selected as seedlings. These cuttings, cut into 20 to 25 seam long sections, are cut from the stem and the buds are retained to ensure the ability to sprout. Cassava is usually planted at the beginning of the rainy season to ensure adequate moisture for the seedlings to grow. Farmers will prepare to plough the soil to a depth of 30 to 40 cm's, ensuring that the soil is loose. After preparing the soil, the next step is to select the seeds. Healthy cuttings, free from pests and diseases, are taken from mature cassava plants about 10-12 months old. When planting, farmers can place the cuttings vertically, tilted or horizontally at appropriate distances for the best growth of the plants. On many large-scale farms, cassava cultivation has been modernised. Specialised machines simultaneously dig trenches, plant cuttings, cover with soil and compact the ridges, all in one efficient motion. These machines can plant up to two hectares in a day, significantly reducing labour and increasing productivity. After planting, the cuttings begin to germinate within 7 to 10 days, during which time farmers focus on fertilising to provide nutrients for the plants to quickly grow into tall, leafy plants. The cassava leaves, often mistaken for marijuana due to their lobed shape, soak up sunlight to promote photosynthesis. With careful cultivation, these plants can reach heights of 1.5 to 3 metres in just 8 to 10 months. When the growing season ends, harvesting begins. On smaller farms or in areas with uneven terrain, harvesting is still done by hand. Farmers pull the plants out of the ground by hand, then carefully dig out the roots with a knife or hoe. For added convenience, they often cut the stem before pulling it out, making it easier to pull the roots out of the hard, dry soil.
When the tubers are deep or firmly attached, farmers need to dig around them with a hoe, being careful not to break them, a labour-intensive and labour-intensive process that does not yield much. Meanwhile, on large commercial farms, farmers use cassava diggers to increase harvesting efficiency. Workers then manually collect the remaining tubers, bagging them for transport. Each harvester can save many hours of manual labour, making the process highly efficient, especially during peak seasons. After harvesting, cassava roots begin a new journey at the processing facility. First, they are inspected to remove damaged or rotten roots. Then, depending on the final product, the cassava roots are divided into two main streams. One part is sliced for drying and used in the animal feed or fermentation industries such as bioethanol and vinegar production. The remaining part goes to the starch refining line. From the dump, an automated conveyor system transports the selected roots to a horizontal drum washer, where high-pressure water jets and rotating paddles scrub away the mud, sand and outer skin without the use of chemicals. Unlike traditional peeling methods, this industrial washing method preserves more of the starchy interior. After cleaning, workers manually inspect the roots to detect any blemishes that machines may have missed. The roots are then ground into a powder using a roller mill or high-speed mill, which frees the starch from the cell structure. The starch water fibre mixture is then pumped into a centrifuge or vibrating screen. The high rotational speed pushes the starch and liquid through the fine mesh while the fibres and impurities are separated. These fibres are not wasted, they are reused as high energy animal feed. Next, the starch slurry undergoes dewatering using a filter press or rotary vacuum filter, depending on the size of the plant. This step reduces the moisture content to 40-45%, creating a soft, moldable starch cake. The next stage is drying. Using flash dryers, high-speed hot air evaporates the remaining moisture in seconds. The heat source is usually from biomass furnaces, which increases energy efficiency. The final product is fine white cassava starch powder, 
which is packed into 25 kg, 50 kg or 1 ton jumbo bags using an automatic packaging system. Finally, they will wait for shipping for export around the world. If you find this journey as fascinating as we do, don't forget to like the video, leave a comment with your thoughts or questions and subscribe to our channel for more incredible stories from the world of farming. Your support helps us continue to share these essential and inspiring stories with the world.